This is a piece of poetry in the Manx dialect. Uh, with uh, my apologies to the author, although he's dead, but uh, if he heard it, he wouldn't re recognize that it's something that he had written. Philly the Fiddler, Fiddler, of course, was the weaver. Philly the Fiddler was a friend of the fairies. He lived down in Glenmay by the side of the river, in a little thatched cottage half covered in heaven. And outside the door stood two threes of tramming. That gave very shade to the fairies in summer, and fruit was the late to eat in the autumn. They lived in the coast of the cottage and went there and often helped Philly when weary with weaving and Philly left Crame and Penjain for their supper and they'd on the Cathans when Philly was sleeping. One night when Philly came home in the moonlight, he saw there was a terrible commotion. They were riding on rabbits and hares which they'd turned into horses. And some of them dismounted and come on to meet him. And what's the going on here, said old Philly? Oh, we're having a picnic down at Glen William and expecting all the clans from the island. And they all know that Philly is a friend of the fairies, and won't you come with us and join in the dancing? Yes, how could I get to, to Glen William before dawn when all your fairies' palaces will be vanishing? It's all right for you, and it's for you, and it's got horses. And one of them gave a little snigger and said to old Philly, Bring out the weaver's beam from the kitchen. So Philly brought out the beam from the kitchen and he turned it into a prancing pony. And Philly got mounted and rode of the fairies, over hedges and ditches, straight as the crow flies, and down through Glen Russian and on to Glen Faber, and there they were met with some of the clans. They then took a bee line on for Nakshara and on for Glen Cam with the devil's crooked elbow. And instead of them going around on the elbow, they jumped the glens from shoulder to shoulder. Oh man, for Philly it was just like a dream. But my God, what a jump it was for the beam. And because he had taken the Lord's name in vain, his horse was turned back to a loom beam again. And there sat old Phil on his beam in the road. And then he got up and shouldered the load. And started to trudge home to his humble abode. Vowing and vowing that never again would he be taking the Lord's name in vain. <laughs>